Good morning, everyone. It's good to see everyone here. I see we have some visiting families here today. It's good to see all of you. My name is Sandy Hartman, in case you don't know me. And I'm going to lead worship today because Pastor Mary is home fighting off the flu. Quite a few people are dealing with flu these days. And Julie Seedorf is going to do the children's sermon and the sermon that Pastor Mary had already prepared ahead of time. So I'm glad to see everyone here. And I don't have any announcements unless someone has something they want made known. Okay, if not, let's stand and do our gathering song. Gather us in, it's in the ELW number 532. Please rise. like to follow along in the bulletin we gather for worship in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit Amen let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we confess our sins before God and one another God of promise and new life too often we have failed to place our trust in you we let our fears and resentments guide our decision-making. Too often we neglect the needs of others. We doubt, we look down on others, we prefer darkness to the brilliance of your light. For all this, we ask your mercy and forgiveness, that our hearts may be made clean again. Amen. As a loving shepherd gathers his sheep, so our Lord protects and cares for us. 
As a patient parent cares for a wayward child, so is God's mercy for us. Let us rejoice. God forgives us and every day seeks to renew us in the image of God. Thanks be to God. It's not printed in your bulletin, but at this time we're going to sing the Kyrie, and you will find that on page 184 in the front of your hymnal. Please join with me as we pray the prayer of the day. <clears throat> God of miracles, at the wedding in Cana, your son Jesus turned water into wine. His miracle was a sign of your power, God. Show us what your power can do in this world. Help us to work your miracles in our tired and lonely world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And now we'll have the children's sermon. So any kids out there, come on up. There's a bunch of them, I think. Come on up. Got plenty of room. Come and sit by me. You don't know me, but you'll get to know me. Come on up and sit down. Wow, a lot of kids here today. Here, you can sit in front, too, if you want, so I can see you. It's really important that I see you. Okay, my name is Julie, I'm a grandma, and I write books, I write mysteries. Now, when I write books, I have to look for different things so I know about people and I know about things in the book. So I don't know many of you today, so I need to find out a little bit about you, and I need you to find out about me. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ask your names. Now, I won't remember them, probably, because I'm old, you know, but um, I want to know your names. So I'm going to go down with the microphone and tell me your name. Christian. Wash. What's your name? Nadia. Nadia. 
Boy, it's nice to meet all of you. Oh, what's his name? Oak Brook. Oak Brook. Oh, we have Oak Brook up here too. That's good. That's good. So, now, how else do you suppose you could find out a little more about me? I have a purse here. You suppose if we pulled something out of my purse, you'd know a little bit about me? So let's do that. First of all, what's this? A book. And it says, two little girls. It's a children's book. So what would that tell you about me? It's made out of paint. What else? Do you suppose, who does this say, if any of you can read? It says, by Julie Seedorf, and that's my name. So that tells you I wrote a book, right? So let's see what else is in here. Oh, it is a cup. And I know my grandchildren never see me without this in my hand. So what does that tell you? What do you think I put in the cup? Coffee, yes. So what does that tell you about me? That I, I need energy. Yes, I do. I do. Boy, that's, and that's it. First thing I do when I get up in the morning is I have a cup of coffee. But look, there's kids on my cup. I have grandchildren. I have four grandchildren. In fact, two of them are here with us today. So that tells me a little bit about that. Now, today, look at this. It's a water bottle. Now, this isn't about me. Today's story is about a wedding that takes place in Canaan. And it's about Jesus. Now, if you wanted to find out more about Jesus, where would you look? Because there you go, the Bible. Yes. Yes, say that out loud. Bible. The Bible. Why would we look in the Bible? Anybody can tell me? Because there's a lot of stories about Jesus. There are. And do you know what? Every one of you has a story, too. And every person out here in the congregation has a story, too. But today we're going to tell a story about Jesus and water. Now, what do you do with this bottle of water? Drink it. But there was a wedding. And at a wedding, in those days, they had wine at the wedding. And they ran out of wine. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you have. Okay. So, all they had was water. And Mary said, whoa. We need, well, she didn't say whoa in those days. This grandma says, whoa. We need some wine. And you know what Jesus did? He turned this, he turned water into wine. And do you know what that's called? It's called a miracle. Does anyone know what a miracle is here? Do you? Okay, you know how to make wine. But he didn't do that. He just took this and it was poof and it came out wine. So a miracle is when God makes everything change. When things change from the ordinary, ordinary water, to the extraordinary to yeah and it goes wow and do you know what he does with your life now what do you do when you're sad do you ask do you ask Jesus for help so that you will smile okay so maybe next time you do that ask Jesus to change your life and sometimes you can change lives too and do you know how by just smiling at someone. Turn around and smile at all those people out in the congregation. Give them a big smile. Wave at them. I bet that'll make your day their day today because some people don't have anyone smile at them all day long. 
So I think now, I thank you so much for coming up and being such good listeners. And do we have Sunday school today? Oh, there's your Sunday school teacher. You can go with her. And I'll try and get up without falling down. have a reader today, Jody. No? <laughs> the psalm for today is number 36, chapter 36, verses 1 through 5. 5, excuse me, 5 through 10, let's try that. Please join me in reading responsibly. Your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heavens, your faithfulness to the clouds, your righteousness is like the mighty mountains. Your judgments are like the great deep. You save humans and animals alike, O Lord. How precious is your steadfast love, O God. All people may take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house, and you give them drink from the rivers of your delights. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. O oh, continue your steadfast love to those who know you and your salvation to the upright of heart. Here ends the psalm reading.
The reading today is from John 2, 1 through 11. On the third day, there was a wedding of Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water, and they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves a good wine first and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed him. A few years ago, Pastor Mary's mom opened her refrigerator and saw a bottle of wine. She turned to Mary with a tisk tisk tisk. Mary was over 40 at the time, and her mom was judging her for having one bottle of liquor in her home. Why? Wine symbolizes only bad things for her mother, contrary to most people. Wine, with its sparkle and zip, has symbolized hope and joy for centuries. In today's Bible reading, it symbolizes hope, joy, and even life. During the time of Jesus, wine was a primary ingredient for a happy wedding. It was so important the groom hired a chief steward named the master of the wedding feast, whose only responsibility was the wine. The chief steward is hired to order the wine, taste it, prevent it present it, and serve it. In the Bible story, a wedding is taking place in Cana. Jesus and his mother and his disciples were all invited. We have no idea whose wedding it was, but scholars have guessed that it might have been the wedding of Mary's nephew, John, the son of Zebedee. Weddings in first century Israel lasted a full week. Can you imagine a full week for a wedding? Following the ceremony, the bride and groom were paraded through the streets to their new home. Instead of taking off for a private honeymoon, for the next seven days, the couple hosted a celebration of family and friends. The wedding at Cana was still going strong when disaster struck. The wine steward badly miscalculated and didn't order enough wine. The story says that Mary found Jesus telling her son that the wine had run out. No more wine meant no more wedding celebration. The party would come to an end much sooner than planned. It was a disaster. This story is written in the Gospel of John. Know this, John's gospel is filled with symbolism. Symbolically, then, the wine running out means something more than the party ending. Wine symbolized hope, joy, and even life itself. So in the story, all these good things come to an end. Now, Pastor Mary took a week of vacation after Christmas. She spent most of the two weeks with her children. They went to movies, they cooked food together, they played games and they did a jigsaw puzzle. They spent time with good friends. And then the vacation was over and Mary had to catch up on laundry and say goodbye to her kids and head back to work. Reality hit. All good things come to an end. In the midst of joyful celebrations, ordinary life returns. And one day, even those ordinary days will end. That's the story of humanity. The wine fails. Good gifts that we have in our lives, our relationships, our once healthy bodies, 
They will come to an end in our own death or the death of another. Today's Bible story is the story of us. For us, the wine will fail. For some, it will fail sooner rather than later. But that's only the beginning of the story. Six jars sat near the door of the house, big enough to hold 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus had his friends fill them with water to the brim, and then he turned the water into wine. The steward was shocked because when he tasted it, it was finer than anything that had ever been served. Shocked that the host would save the best for the end of the celebration. With Christ, the best is yet to come. The power of Jesus can transform. The light of Jesus can push away the darkness. Fear can turn to faith and sadness can become joy. Death can give way to new life. Christ changes the ordinary into glories. The water turns to wine. The good news is that Jesus has the power for our every need. And in God's care, the best is saved to last. The story goes that a man who was in hospice and whose life was coming to an end that his pastor came to pray with him and the man wanted to discuss the funeral. He told the pastor what he wanted to wear in the casket and what hymns he wanted sung. He explained that he wanted to be buried with his Bible and then he added, and most importantly, put a fork in my right hand. The man smiled and said, that confuses you, doesn't it? He reminded the pastor of what it was like to gather with family and friends for wonderful meals, sharing good food and good conversations. The plate would get emptied and the dishes would get gathered up, but the voice would come from the kitchen. Save your forks! Dessert is on the way. Maybe a slab of chocolate cake or a piece of apple pie, even though the meal was great you know that the best is yet to come. You know a fork truly could be a Christian symbol. We could each be buried with a fork. It is part of Mary's funeral planning, in fact, to make sure there is a fork in her hand. Because at death, the promise from our Savior is that the best is truly yet to come. This life and all its goodness and all its joy is only temporary. The body of ours is only temporary as well. Today, we celebrate the temporary and we give thanks to God that the best is yet to come. With God, there will always be more. Thanks be to God. Amen.
If you would please stand now as we confess the Apostles' Creed, which is found on page 105 in the front of your hymn book. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's share the peace with each other. You can be seated now at this time and we'll receive our morning offering.
our offertory response will be hymn number 785, verses 1 and 3. Please stand. Confident in your abundant grace, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Gracious Lord God, we give you thanks that your beloved Son is filled with the power to transform the ordinary into extraordinary. We pray that your spirit will fill our hearts and your joy would renew our faith so that we can be continually renewed, continually transformed. Remind us always that through you, God, joy can come after sadness, hope from grief, and life from death. Fill us with the hope of your transformational power. Lord, in your mercy. Your wondrous miracles can be found in all of creation, God. We see your power in the smallest seed to the most majestic oak, from a drop of water to the vast oceans. Your miracles surround us. We are grateful for all you have made and pray for the power and integrity to care for and sustain your creation. Inspire us to be stewards of your mighty creation. Lord, in your mercy. Raise up to wholeness all who have been brought to their knees by sickness, grief, addiction, neglect, abuse, poverty, or brokenness. Be with all who are in danger or in need. We pray for those who grieve, including Bill Helfritz and his family and friends as they grieve the death of Jan. We pray as well for Jade and Lissa Warmka and family as they grieve the death of Jade's mother. Comfort all who grieve with hope in the resurrection. By your grace, be with all those in need. Lord, in your mercy. Grateful for your everlasting faithfulness, we lift our hearts and prayers to you, merciful God, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In the benediction, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Our sending song this morning is song number 881, Let All Things Now Living. treats downstairs. I think I saw some people down there earlier. So everyone is welcome for fellowship and coffee and treats in the basement. Go in peace, serve the Lord, 